I am Iron Man. I am Iron Man. And I am Iron Man. Tony Stark's journey is marked by these three moments of declarations. One is an affirmation of his identity at the face of uncertainty. Another a private acceptance after his change and finally at the face of death. But Endgame is worth its own essay, so let's focus on these two epochs instead for a moment. Iron Man's journey is focused on identity, but if the Captain America trilogy had a strong theme that focused on the perseverance of an individual against a changing world, then the Iron Man trilogy presents an oppositional journey. It's about an individual changing in a world that doesn't. A man who is so ahead of the curve that he lives a life of perpetual anxiety because he is so incredibly dislocated from his own time period. A funny man whose smile is an anchor for a wandering mind distracted by dangling fear and pessimisms. Is everything a joke to you? Funny things. Right? You think you're the only superhero in the world? Want to do? I want an American cheeseburger. All right. Well, this stays with me then. Come on, here. You can have a piece. Take Thank two. you. The first Iron Man introduces two key concepts, trauma and self-esteem, and specifically how these two forces shape each other. In the opening, this is symbolized by the initial setup of Tony's conversation with his military escort. I have a question to ask. Yes, please. Is it true you went 12 for 12 with last year's maximum cover model? That is an excellent question. Here he's presented as a celebrity, a national hero beloved by the community rooted in his contributions. His self-esteem is high because of all the love that protects and encloses him. But then the payoff is when this community is attacked and slaughtered by his own weapons. He's made vulnerable in the vast totality of a world he was formerly protected from. This is the traumatic event. As a quote from Michael Pickering and Emily Kitely, trauma profoundly disrupts capacity to connect back with the past and make it validly usable in the present. Though, of course, responses to trauma and their subsequent manifestations range considerably. Tony has a naturally high self-esteem, so despite being confronted with the ugly consequences of his life and experiencing a traumatic event that physically and psychologically scars him, his personality is extremely resilient and strong enough not to crack, and instead absorbs the puncture by adapting his life around it. That could run your heart for 50 lifetimes. Yeah. Or something big for 15 minutes. My turn. A crappier actor would have done a cheap performative technique where he starts out cowardly narcissistic and then ends stereotypically heroic, but Robert Downey Jr. is ever more subtle than that. Even before making the first suit, Tony fights back against his captors. When he's interviewed about the ethics of making weapons, he doesn't dodge the question. He's actually able to justify his sense of morality. Okay, you're serious. My old man had a philosophy. Peace means having a bigger stick than the other guy. That's a great line coming from the guy selling the sticks. Tell me, do you plan to report on the millions we've saved by advancing medical technology or kept from starvation with our IntelliCrops? Tony's attitude and convictions doesn't actually change, but his foundational self-image does, because he's innately morally aware and self-conscious. The first armor made in a cave with, with a box, box of scraps is symbolic of his self-esteem and his ability to reshape the traumatic event as an opportunity to adapt his own identity into a new narrative. A narrative of redemption. I shouldn't be alive. Unless it was for a reason. All his subsequent acts of shutting down his weapons, building a better suit, and intervening overseas is ultimately the manifestation of his imagination repairing the damage done to his narrative against the trauma. And at the end of Iron Man, his public declaration secures his new identity, one that is born from trauma, but is also controlled by his self-esteem. Fucking fly just came into my house! Are you serious? I closed the windows! Where is it coming from? But eventually something has to break. Individual trauma compared to collective trauma can be more difficult to deal with because that painful process isn't as knowable, communicable, or even shareable. And in Iron Man 2, Tony's new narrative begins to shatter even though he's successful in his new endeavors as Iron Man legally, politically, and culturally. A sense of failure is pervasive underneath his success. The element used in his arc reactor is poisoning him. Ivan Vanko, a victim of the Stark legacy, appears and damages Tony's image, and his relationship with Rhodey and Pepper begins to disintegrate as Tony descends into excess. You know, the question I get asked most often is, Tony, how do you go to the bathroom in the suit? 
Just like that. Tony Stark's main power isn't the suit, it's his ability to create solutions, and now he can't. Even if he's got the mind, he doesn't have the materials, and this failure is what exacerbates his anxiety. There's a gap now between his self-image and his self-esteem, so his trauma begins to resurface as a problem within his identity. The arc reactor is that scar in his very being that he can't reconcile with anymore, and that's what trauma is. It's the inability to make sense of experience, because the pain punctures your very foundational being. So for the first time, Tony represses what he can't fix, and this ultimately kills him. Till Nick Fury shows up and is like, hey, let me help you out, and, and then this is what helps fix this problem. Which is an odd writing decision to say the least. But it's by confronting this issue with his father that Tony discovers the solution to the arc reactor problem. An element that his father had discovered years ago. I'm limited by the technology of my time. But one day you'll figure this out. What is and always will be. My greatest creation is you. The father issues with Howard Stark thematically mirrors the core meaning in Tony's journey. The entire Stark Expo we're introduced to at the beginning of the film is spectacular and delightful, and it's all done in respect to his father, but it's actually hiding Tony's resentment and reverence towards someone he doesn't even like. It's all flash and no truth. Instead, it smothers something sensitive. So this discovery that Howard not only loved Tony, but went out of his way to preserve something, a discovery that provides Tony with an emotional revelation, this is what helps Tony fill in that puncture. He stops seeing himself as a victim to his own failures and instead as a successful son. His trauma is once again repealed by Tony's imagination and constructing a new foundational pillar in his being, and therefore, he rehabilitates himself. He constructs a new narrative once again. And then he just sort of beats up Ivan Vanko, which is another weird writing decision. It's not a compliment. It's not a com it is a compliment. <laughs> now that I think about it, oh god. I'm gonna take a shower. You're gonna join me. Is that Iron Man? Technically I am. Well, Tony has made it now, he's completed his transformation, where he used to struggle getting the suit off, he can now casually stroll on his roof as it's being removed with no obstruction. The Avengers offered a great look at who Tony is when he's past the threshold. He stands toe-to-toe -to -toe with a guard, he joins a community of paragons, he saves the city, and travels into space and has a glimpse of the cosmos. A new, completely different frontier, both artistically and, well, business-wise too, but whatever. So where does someone go after they've had their happily ever after? Well, there's more anxiety, of course. My diagnosis is that you've experienced a severe anxiety attack. This peak actually creates a second traumatic experience, except this time his self-esteem isn't remotely enough to handle it. He can't repair the puncture in his understanding in the self because the old answers are no longer convincing. What good is a man protected in a suit in the face of intergalactic destruction? For Tony Stark, Iron Man is no longer a symbol of strength and moral certainty anymore, it's a reminder of his own insignificance. And this is thematically symbolized in the wider story. The government has a thinly veiled political marketing strategy with the Iron Patriot in order to disguise the more complicated issues overseas. It tested well with focus groups, alright? I am Iron Patriot. Listen, so War Machine was a little too aggressive, alright? This sends a better message. The Mandarin is a threatening terrorist spreading fear all across America, but it's actually just a marketing mascot created by an American business dude, Aldrich Killian. As Tony started the story with the quote, we create our own demons. A famous man once said, we create our own demons. Who said that? What does that even mean? Doesn't matter. I said it because he said it. Everything is about the construction of superficial symbols, which substitute truth by evoking dramatic but inaccurate fears. I wouldn't go in there for 20 minutes. <laughs> Tony Stark sees himself as a tiny man in a cosmos too big for him to handle, but in reality he's simply a mechanic, a dude who can build things, and there's nothing wrong with that simplicity. And by adjusting the scope of his identity, this is how Tony Stark overcomes his trauma. Tony has to build another identity, a new narrative where the values of his self-esteem and self-concept isn't fixed on the dependency of what the Iron Man armor symbolically holds, but instead on himself as Tony Stark. The power of the childish wisdom of curiosity is highlighted to him with his experience with Harley, so Tony becomes a new man once again. But this time he can just utter his identity in private to himself because the name he once declared doesn't own him. He now owns it.
If we map Tony's journey out in relation to self-esteem, imagination and trauma, each installment shows the trauma puncturing further and further into his being until his self-esteem can't mediate his trauma anymore with his imagination. That is the ugliest thing I've ever drawn in my entire life. That says imagination by the way. Jesus Christ. Imagination is incredibly important in responding to painful experiences because it's how you connect experience into your sense of continuity. As I quote from the mnemonic imagination, trauma entails a failure of the autobiographical project because it produces experience that is not amenable to assimilation. And each Iron Man movie effectively shows a man developing new continuities for his identity, as a response to encountering psychological materials that can't be used. The Iron Man as a concept, in quotation marks, isn't actually about the suit or a man who's a genius, it's actually about the process of repairing the self, and that's what this entire trilogy centers on. A story about appropriating pain under the motive of self-reason. You're a mechanic, right? Right. Why don't you just build something? The first Iron Man movie really is kind of perfect in the way it's so confidently structured and yet so chaotically charming in its improvisation. Famously, it was filmed without a complete script, but it's still able to tightly explore a story with genuine, sincere depth. Because at the centre of the direction and the performances is John Favreau and Robert Downey Jr's understanding that this tension between trauma and self-esteem is what makes the story work. And it's crazy that this trilogy and a decade-long journey exists all because a couple of talented people were like, meh, let's just make it up. Relax. You are in a $200 million student film. Have fun, just relax. This trilogy is more like a garden than a piece of architecture. Nothing is completely planned out, obviously, but it still grows. The first Iron Man was about a man changing, the second Iron Man was about the same man struggling to maintain that change, and Iron Man 3 is about that man learning to stop being so dependent on what that change represents. And that's what's interesting about Marvel Studios, it feels like reading three different comic book runs of the same character because reinvention is at the heart of the story and it wholly embraces it. Thank you for saving me. Don't waste that. Don't waste your life. It started off with someone who is absolutely self-centered, has more money than they could ever spend, is spiritually dead, and has no idea that they're about to go through a crucible that is going to put them in a position to be of service to their community. The first suit is all about, will this get me and my ego and my precious physical frame out of this cave I'm in and into the desert where maybe the cavalry can come get me and bring me back to my stupid life. Right. Right? Right. The last one is not designed to be able to do its job and have you make it past it. I took your stuff. How does that make you feel? Do you feel bad? Good. Cause that's how I feel!